The Model E organ was made by, uh, the, at the time, the Hammond Clock Company from 1937 to 1942. And it was the first organ that Hammond produced that was targeted towards uh, the concert hall, the civic auditorium, the theater, for uh, a more classical repertoire. Something a little more than what you see uh, on the corner of your Main Street USA church. The reason for making this video, um, more so than to just document the, uh, the restoration process, uh, was because when I started to uh, research the organ, the Model E, I noticed that there really wasn't a lot of info out there on the internet. That's not to say that what is out there was difficult to find, it was very easy to find, but there just wasn't a lot of it. And uh, you, you see the same pictures of the same examples over four or five internet sites. There was only two or three YouTube videos uh, that I, I thought were kind of poorly recorded and uh, you know they didn't really take advantage of the repertoire for what it was intended, which was classical. So uh, I figured I would, I would put this out just to um, give a, more of a, a comprehensive overview for the organ and what it did. In August of 2014, I started to look for an AGO Hammond. Um, and in doing my research, uh, Bob Herman, who is a Hammond restorer extraordinaire in, uh, in North Carolina, he said to me, you know, I, I have this Hammond E and it's, it's, it's beat to hell. It's really in bad shape and it's, it, it's, it's in my warehouse, or my garage, wherever he had it, and uh, you can have it. Uh, I'll give it to you if, you if you promise not to take it apart and piece it out you can have it. And so I thought, great, that's a, that's a no-brainer. The Model E was really ahead of its time uh, in terms of certain features. Things that were on this organ wouldn't make their way to other Hammond organs for quite a few years. Some of the things that the Model E was first for were dual matching transformers. The dual matching transformers are necessary uh, for the split preset panel, uh, split vibrato, uh, in this case, split tremulance and the dual expression pedals. Uh, up until this point, it was a single matching transformer, but you couldn't have control over the, the different manuals without them. Uh, of course, the dual expression pedals, you, you wouldn't see on another Hammond until, if I'm not mistaken, the G100 in the 60s. So almost 30 years later before you saw that on another Hammond. Uh, the same thing with the pedal pistons, the presets. Uh, you're not going to see them again until the G100. Things like the pedal volume indicators never came around again. And my favorite feature, of course, is the Great 2 Pedal 8 coupler, which basically takes the last seven drawbars of the great manual and assigns them to what would be the eight foot drawbar of the pedals. So it was advanced. It, it was an advanced organ for its time. It was an advanced organ for Hammond at the time. And it wouldn't be until after the Second World War that some of these features would show up on later Hammond organs. <laughs> I knew I wanted to start in early April uh, because I knew I would disassemble the whole thing outside and I would start with the woodwork. Um, I wanted to work with the wood outside where it was warm enough that I could be comfortable but cool enough that I didn't have to worry about uh, things like humidity and, and all of that kind of stuff. So I realized I would have to take a lot of pictures. Um, as I took everything apart, I took a picture of everything, or at least I tried to take a picture of everything. And the logic was that if, um, if I was stuck and I didn't know how something went back together again, because there are so few of these organs out there, uh, I didn't know what kind of help I was gonna get. I didn't know who would be able to offer any advice over things that you only can find in the Model E. Starting with the wood, uh, first I applied a, uh, a chemical uh, varnish remover called Rock Miracle, and that's, that's the best 
varnish remover out there. Don't let anybody tell you any different. And um, so uh, after a couple of coats of that, it, it was really tough getting off that, that old varnish. It was, it was really on there pretty good. Um, after that, I hand sanded everything. Um, there were no orbiters, no, no circular sanders, nothing like that. It was all done by hand, uh, as much in one direction as I possibly could. There were oil stains on the organ, underneath the lacquer. I, I, I guess, you know, wherever the varnish came off, uh, someone had, at some point, they had set cans of uh, oil or motor oil or whatever the case was. So there were oil stains in there, and I, I had to remove those as best I could. And I did that with, um, with some OxyClean. Uh, some really strong concentrations of OxyClean, and it took most of the oil stains out of the finish. Uh, and then uh, after that was finished, um, I applied a Minwax wal Walnut uh, Stain, and then I topped it off with um, five coats of a polycrylic. I decided to use the polycrylic, which is water-based, only because it's it's easier to work with. I'm not really a professional woodworker, um, so to try to use something like shellac or varnish or things like that that um, you know probably require a little more skill, uh, I just decided to go with the with the polycrylic. There were some areas of the wood that had to be repaired. There were spots um, on the top of the organ where the veneer had ripped off. So that involved going in and applying a new veneer um, and then trying as best as I could to match the color of, of the rest of the organ. The other issue I had to contend with were the, uh, the bases at the end of each of the decorative columns on either side of the organ. The Hammond E came with these bases that had the, the molding wrapped around it. So this is a molding from a, an HR40 tone cabinet and uh, this was the closest molding that I could find that would match the, the base molding of the Model E. It's not exact, but it's, it's pretty close. Um, but unfortunately, it was too thick in the back and it had this little lip on the bottom. So uh, with the table saw and uh, the circular saw and the uh, miter saw, I was able to uh, cut the back off of it, cut that little lip, and, uh, and that's what we got. So that was uh, as close as I could get to matching the Model E um, molding and it's pretty close unless you get on your hands and knees you're not going to tell the difference the pedal clavier was it wasn't in terrible shape again i did the same thing that i did with the wood on the on the cabinet uh, I, I took everything down and i sh stripped it all down to to bare wood sanded them again the coats of, of polycrylic on top and I, I also replaced all of the, the felts, the upstop felts. The side-to-side -side felts were, were swapped out. The leather guides on the side were, were replaced. And it, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, this, obviously, the manuals here are in the middle of getting taken apart. Um, I've already removed the drawbar base Actually, I've removed the drawbars from the drawbar base. I've started to disassemble the uh, the back panel here. And here we have the key combs. Note, for those of you who are interested, the key combs are slightly different than on the later series. These are pinched in. They're actually wrapped and pinched as opposed to riveted uh, like the later models were. Um, and also, a, and as you could show you over here, the different style of keys. Um, this, these early pre-war keyboards had a, a spring and nut design back here, as opposed to the the leaf design of the later models. Uh, some people, including myself, find this to be a superior design, but undoubtedly a more expensive design, which is why uh, Hammond, like everything else, later abandoned it for something cheaper. Uh, here you see the uh, preset keys underneath for the typewriter keys. Um, basically, though, it, it, other than the, the key itself, it's the same design uh, with the rocker motion right here. Um, still utilizing the springs. If you look over here, that is a completely disassembled one. 
The manuals were done pretty much just like uh, any other set of manuals. There were no surprises. The keys were removed, uh, the bin tops were removed, everything uh, was vacuumed out. Um, the contacts were cleaned, key contacts were cleaned. Uh, obviously, 1938, we didn't have to worry about any foam. The uh, bus bars were removed, no surprises, except there was one thing that, that caught my eye, uh, the assembly that connected the pedal to the manuals, the, the coupler. Um, and so this harness went up and attached itself to the end of the uh, seven of the nine bus bars. After everything was cleaned, uh, before I reassembled everything, uh, I wanted to paint the bins and uh, the bin covers uh, for no other reason than to just prevent further oxidation. There was some rust in there and uh, I wanted to make sure that nothing else happened to it and I never wanted to take it apart again, obviously. Um, since I had to paint them something, I went with a black and gold motif and I just used it everywhere. The drawbar base and the rails were, uh, it was one of two things that I decided I was uh, not going to do myself. I was going to farm it out. Uh, I just felt that I, I didn't have the experience or, or the tools really to, uh, to give it a professional look. Uh, and since it was, you know, it was right in the front, as soon as you open the organ, you're gonna see it. And uh, I didn't wanna take a chance. So I sent it to my buddies at uh, Stella Performance uh, in Deer Park. How you doing, Bruce? And he sandblasted the, the old rails and the, the drawbar base, and he primed it and painted it black, and then he, you know, wet sanded it down. And I, I put a, a replica uh, Hammond logo on it that I got from Classic Hammonds. Uh, hey, Steve. And then, uh, and then Bruce finished it with a nice thick coat of lacquer, and uh, and and it, it came out dynamite. I, it, I definitely couldn't have done anything even close to that. The pedal assembly was in sad shape. It was disgusting, it was filthy, it was rusty. Uh, the screws were almost impossible to get out. They were so corroded. And there were the pedal piston mechanism that, uh, that selects the presets that had to be dealt with. So I, I didn't want to remove the bus bars. If there was a problem with the bus bars with flaking palladium, I was gonna be in a lot of trouble. So I was fortunate that after removing the cover, uh, I was really able to get in there and, and access all of the bus bars without having to move them. So I was able to throw in a nice layer of deoxid, clean it up, uh, threw in some electronic lubricant on top of it, did a bus bar shift, cleaned the, uh, the assembly, prepped it for paint, and, uh, and then I did, you got it, golden uh, and black. Replaced all the screws so they were nice and shiny, replaced the felts, I cleaned up the resistor panel, and uh, and that was it. The preamp was uh, the second and last thing that I did not do myself. So uh, I was fortunate enough to hook up with Tim Warnick at Retrolinear, and Joe Pantano over there too. How you doing, guys? Uh, and they just did a fabulous job. It's a good thing that I sent it to them too because the output transformer was dead. Uh, and it had to be replaced. So Tim found a donor from, I believe, a Model BC. After I got it back, I threw my, uh, my black and uh, gold paint on it, and, uh, and it came out great. The rheostat box, after speaking to a number of people, I was convinced that all I had to do was just swap out the, uh, the wax caps, which I did. Cleaned the, uh, the contacts in there. But the, the original resistors and the original wiring uh, still remained. I just, I just cleaned it up. I did my usual black and gold again. Uh, very little to do with that. The main tone generator, other than it being disgustingly dirty and gunked with oil and all that kind of crap, uh, it was in pretty good shape. And so all I did really with that is just, you know, clean it up as best I could, denatured alcohol, toothbrush, and, uh, and then I recapped it using the uh, orange drop 225Ps, the, the wax and paper capacitors from 1938 had to go. As you can see, <laughs> this is a, a 0.105 microfarad capacitor that's over the limit. And uh, there's a, a 0.255 capacitor. And you can see that that's out too. The chorus generator had a bad run motor. 
And that presented a little bit of a problem because uh, these uh, pre-scanner vibrato run motors uh, have a different gear in the middle. We had to go in search of another run motor that would work, either from a Model A or a, preferably a BC that used the same cage style tremulant. Again, Joe Pantano and Tim Warnick from uh, Retrolinear to the rescue, they found me uh, a donor run motor, but organ form member Microlevel was great and he, he sent me a little tutorial on to how to do a gear swap, or actually it's the other way around, it's merely more like a stator swap on how to take a early gear and swap it out in a later model run motor and uh, that came out dynamite and, and the picture that you actually see here is the uh, it, it's, it's the swapped gear in the new run motor and it's spinning so it, that worked out like a champ so thank you Mark I appreciate that when it came to mods on the organ I tried to be really careful. I didn't want to turn the organ into something it wasn't. Probably the most radical thing that I did in terms of mods was uh, the smooth drawbars. That changed the design of the organ. The original drawbars were, uh, there were a lot of them that were worn. Uh, the numbers were worn off them. So I knew I wanted to replace them and, and I wanted to replace them with a set of chromes. There are other E's out there that have chromes. So I, I didn't have a problem putting the chrome drawbars in. But I was really not a fan of the ratchet drawbar system. I, I don't like them. They're kind of clunky, and, and I find it difficult to, uh, to maneuver them when you're in the middle of playing. So I went with the smooth drawbar system, and uh, it, it came out great. Uh, I really have no complaints. They're, they're smoother than, than B3 standard issue drawbars. The other things were fairly simple. Uh, Trek 2 Reverb. Again, because I'm looking for more of that classical sound, I, I like the thought of having a Trek 2 reverb in there. I also had to add in a, uh, a, a note generator from, the, uh, from Trek 2. Uh, tone 54 was dead. I, I wanted to run three tone cabinets, or one Hammond tone cabinet, two Leslie's in it, so uh, I knew I was gonna run a bunch of amps off of it, and I, uh, off of the organ, and I, I didn't want to run everything through the run switch, so I wound up using a uh, Cryotum Solid State Relay. Uh, the other thing that I did was I put two uh, terminal strips in the organ to replace some of the spots in the line panel. The line panel was overcrowded to begin with, and now we're hooking up not only the preamp, but the Trek 2 reverb and then the, uh, the Trek 2 note generator. And it, it just, it was getting really crowded in there. So the other thing I did was uh, to give the, uh, the organ its own B plus power. These early organs relied on the tone cabinet to provide B plus power. I didn't want to be held hostage by that. The pedal volume indicators was probably the, the project that I had the most fun with. I got, a, uh, I got a kick out of it. Again, thanks to the Organ Forum, uh, member Palindrome, Mark in Michigan, how you doing Mark, was kind enough to take measurements for me of his pedal volume indicators, uh, the length of them, the, the, the wire that comes out of the back and such. He sent them over to me, he took pictures of the back and how they were mounted to the, uh, to the cables that went to the expression pedals. I was able to find quarter inch round brass and uh, I made new ones out of it. So that worked out really well. And then the other thing that had to be redone were the, uh, the paper inserts on the pedal indicator preset lights. The, the original ones were ripped. So that was just taking measurements and finding the right font or as close to a, the right font as I could, I could get. And then I got some, uh, some parchment paper so I matched the, uh, the, the color, threw some brown on top of it and that was it. So after all of that work, at the end of the day, what really matters is whether or not the organ plays and sounds great. So I think as we finish the video, I'm going to turn it over to Matt. Matt's going to do a little demonstration for you to show you what the uh, concert E can, can do. And as he's playing, I'll run a uh, montage of videos, uh, just like some before and afters, some various spots of the organ so you could see how the whole journey progresses. And, uh, and that's about it. So thanks for watching. Hope you liked the trip. And uh, Matt, there you go. Take it, kid.